and welcome to Who Dares Rolls TV. I am your host, Mike B. 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 Um, lists. So, um, you know, lists seem to be the really kind of the last holdout <laughs> content. You know, let's quickly make a list. But people like a list. And frankly, I am at the point of the last holdout for content. So, Let's do that. Let's do Mike's top 50 games of all time, sort of. But these are my top 50 games, 50 games that I love, that I've played more than once. <laughs> the ones that I would go back to and play um, again and again and have done. Um, so hopefully, maybe some of this on this list that you will go also. Oh, that looks like a good game. Maybe I should give that a go. We shall see. Um, so uh, let's crack on then. So we're going to go on with it. This is the 50 to 40 countdown of the top 50 games starting kind of now. Um, so there we are. First up there we have Telestrations. Telestrations is kind of like Chinese whispers um, with white clean pads. You have a, a group of pads each. You either change between drawing pictures or writing words and they get passed around the table. You end up getting your flip book back at the end of the round, flip it open and you get to see the how it's come from Batman to bestiality or something. Um, great game. It's guaranteed. Billy laughs whenever I get it at a table. That's why I love it. If I take it out, I guarantee we will at some point have the chuckles and have had many times. Um, I also like playing with the kids and the family members around there, making sure I'm sat next to one of the kids so that I can give them a rude word or draw a rude picture that they then have to explain or draw a picture of. But that's just me. I'm a good parent. Uh, next is Australia. Australia from Martin Wallace. And this is great. This is essentially set in the outback. It's companioned. Kind of a sequel to um, uh, Study and Emboard, set in the same uh, period of time, this kind of Victorian England kind of beset by Cthulhu stuff. Great theme. Um, this one is got trains and Cthulhu. You're essentially in the outback. Good, good day and throw another shrimp on the barbie and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you're building your, your army cape camp and building a train out across the desert, um, trying to find resources, build resources. But in a switch, aside from all this, when you're all doing this, there is every round or every couple of rounds or so, a great old one appearing on the thing, monsters and things, and they start kind of chugging across the old outback towards you, um, like a juggernaut, like a, a really fucked up tentacled Mad Max type shit going on. Um, and you've got to fight them off. Um, and if you're not fighting them off, then you're all going to die. So it's cooperative, competitive, um, really cool design, actually. It's really, I, I like it. I just like the female like design of it. It's, it's, it's one that when I do play again, I go, this is really good fun. Um, and there's an expansion on the way, but I don't know when that's out. But anyway, definitely great. I recommend as Australia. Love it. Omino's, um, it's a cracking game. It's a dice game. Clearly, um, you are on a board. You can play up to four players against it. You're all rolling dice, but you're kind of placing them on a tile. Um, so it's randomized and there's this strategy game of a bit of Sudoku-ish kind of a dice and matching pairs and sets to score them. Um, it's simple. It's straightforward, but it's a real great end of the evening. Throw it on the table, have a crack at it. Um, it's just really replayable. Um, I think there's about three or four different versions he's got of them now, um, of a roll-up map one, portable one, as box version. They're great. It's a really simple, simple, clever design, and it just plays wonderfully. And it is just, I love it because I can bring it out really easily and, and it's easy to teach and anyone can play it and we can play it at the end of an evening. And uh, no one has to think too hard about anything. Hmm. And you can do a whole shit to each other, which is always fun. Chaos Moss. Chaos Moss. So, weird game. It was a Kickstarter a while ago. A expansion was kickstarted last year. It's coming for it. Um, it's kind of like on the um, definitely on the edges of cult. Um, it's a big cosmic encounter, sort of, with lots of different aliens with different control powers and stuff. Essentially, the idea of the game is it's the end of the universe. The universe is collapsing on itself, as it tends to do. Um, and the only thing can save you from this onrushing intergalactic Armageddon is an egg, an ovoid, this weird egg creature that apparently, if you have that, you'll be fine. Everyone else is dead, but you'll be fine. So, big pile of jazz rags and some chocolate and the ovoid, and you're sorted for the rest of eternity. Um, but anyway, the idea of the game is you're going around to different planets trying to find where this ovoid is and each planet has on it a little box with little envelopes in it which you take out and you can have a flick around and see what's in there um and there can be good stuff bad stuff you can lay traps by putting a card in there it triggers a trap when someone looks in it obviously you're playing hide and seek with the ovoid you don't necessarily want to be holding it all game because someone will get wise to that so you end up with this kind of 
space age kind of game of kiss chase or something or tag as everyone's kind of running around this galaxy as the time is ticking down trying to either hide or keep the ovoid not let it found out it's kind of a cool funky idea it's a, it's a great idea it's based on the book apparently really enjoyed it it's uh, just a novel uh, design does kind of some cool stuff i like the hidden stuff i like the idea of the traps and planets the expansion does look like it does really cool stuff it's one actually just talking about it and i'm like damn i need to get that back out on the table so I'll do that soon. Lords of Waterdeep. This is a bit of old classic, really. D&D kind of game. It's a worker placement. It's just a, it's a classic. It's a classic now. It is an old in the tooth. It's a bit of a bit of an old dog still tracking on. Um, really easy to teach. Um, great theming to a point, especially if you bubbling your game if that's your thing um but yeah the idea of worker placement you're building buildings down you're sending your guys off on quests to solve stuff um and you're trying to become one of these shadowy lords of Waterdeep. expansion adds a really nice little just one mechanical touch which is kind of cool this corruption mechanism that goes in there again it's great production design it's a nice decent game and, and it, it is one that has kind of revered the storm and still going and it's one what's well, them play it regularly um it is one that when i get out i'm like ah, you know what why haven't i played this for a while um that's lords of water Dean. and then we have sentinels of the multiverse uh for me personally as it stands this is still the high water mark of sci-fi um, sci of superhero uh, board games or games um, there's just not there's a few around but not like very great i mean i never got on with marvel legendary kind of felt a little bit like it was just a deck builder with it, it, the, the theme kind of disconnected for me with it um played a couple of times never really talked to it i prefer legendary encounters above that um but there so there's not much else i mean there's other stuff but they have like all the batman games are just like punching and fighting sentinels essentially is the splash page from a marvel comic um as a game it's just that big throw down fight between you and a boss um and i like how the decks kind of you learn the decks and they evolve as you play a lot of people banged on the art of it. I don't know why. It had a kind of Paul Popian kind of cool edge to it. I don't know why. I quite appealed to me the aesthetics of it, so I never did an issue with that. Um, and I, I just like what it's doing. Uh, and it's a great solo game you can play if you so need it. And there's tons of expansions. I've not played Oblivion actually the most recent. Um, but yeah, I just like it as what it is. Uh, and it's a really good superhero throwdown thing. We till we wait for that really good superhero game, wherever that's coming from. Terraform of Mars. Who, Terraform of Mars is down here? Well, you know, I don't know. Terraform Mars is a game I've played consistently a lot. If you don't know what Terraform of Mars is now, well, you're kind of aware of you've been. It's a great game, really simple. You are Terraform of Mars. It's essentially the Kim Stanley Robson books into a board game um, without having to pay the, all that naughty licensing rights and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's a cracker. I, I think it, it works so well. It's an engine builder game and it plays so simply. You are just putting a card down and doing what it says pretty much um and building on the board uh so you can teach it relatively quickly people play a few rounds they pick it up and they get going with it and i quite enjoy it i know I, I do enjoy it i like that it's, even though it's kind of a euro it's got some nasty take that in there if you find the cards in there there's a lot of expansions i did a review a video thing ages ago about the expansions in my money really the prelude is the only really 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 decent expansion um along with the colonies one they're, they're probably they're the two that i would if you have to buy a couple of expansions, they're the two that I would steer you towards. Um, it's kind of complete now, other than all the plastic bling that's coming out pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, Terraform Mars. It's a solid, workhorsey game down the middle of the road. Looks atrocious. Production values are ropious. All get out. But it's a fun, good, thought-provoking game as long as you haven't got Tony sat across you with AP. Then we got Stockpile. Stockpile is a stocks and shares game. Sounds boring, doesn't it? Um, and you know, it, it, the theming is kind of boring, um, but it's a cracking little game. Again, it's relatively easy to teach. The idea is you're essentially inside a trading uh, on the stock exchange and there's a heap of explosions, um, explosions? That'd be interesting. Expansions came out for it. Uh, I've not played with all of them. I've got most of it now. Um, it is out of print now, I think. There's a new version coming. They did Kickstarter recently, and then it will probably dissipate like a fart in a jacuzzi, not to be seen again for a while. So if you see it cheap, pick it up. Um, it is really good. I know stocks market sounds thing, but it's all inside of trading. You're all kind of doing each other over. Lots of opportunities to fuck each other over and ah, I've made loads of money and stuff. It's clever. It's a really clever little simple game. I like what it's doing. It does also a very good job of simulating that inside of trading. There's a lot of, as I say, modules and expansions for it. Not all of them as good as others, um, but it's good stuff. It's well produced, well looks, and it's it's a, a good 
spreadsheet game distraction, which I don't really much of a spreadsheet game fan. So moving along from the awful spreadsheet game territory into Spartacus Blood and Sand, a classic Gear Force 9 game based on the TV series, which basically was just for with tits and rude words. Any any TV series that can uh, catchphrase the terminology Jupiter's cock as a as a thing and it's in the game you can shout it whenever that card comes up, I will I will quite happily expose my Jupiter's cock at that point in time. Anyway. Game gladiatorial combat, you can play up to six, which is an insane amount of people and it goes on forever, but it's just dice chucking, you're sending your gladiators into the arena, you're controlling your looters. It nails all of it. It does it so very, very well. Um, it's just, it's cracking. Um, you go in, you fight, you've got that run around the arena. If you're playing that Star Trek music, the, um, you know, do 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 I'll play over the top of this because I can't remember. And then I'll get sued by YouTube probably. Uh, but yeah, that's going on and you're having a fight and you're rolling all the dice. And I like the mechanism in that there is a set of dice representing your health, your attack and your movement. So as you get wounded in the arena, you have to lose these dice off. Dice off. So you're kind of, your gladiator becomes crippled as it goes on. So it's a really nice thematic touch. It just works really well. It's a really good bit of a pretzels type game. You sit around, talk shit, stab each other, have a fight, make money and, and stuff. Great things. I love that. Do love a bit of Spartacus. Well, why is it down here? Should probably be up higher. And there's a reprint coming, which we'll keep an eye on because I'm not sure what it's going to do other than that. I know the art's been got rid of all the TV photos and they get now, but if not, grab the, grab the reprint when it appears. And finally, wrapping up this 50 to 40 countdown uh, is Meeple War. Uh, Meeple War is one I stumbled upon a little while ago. It's for Call Mini or not. It is essentially a real-time strategy game. As a board game, if you think of things like Red Alert or the original Dune, um, any of that stuff where you're building settlements and there's kind of a tick down as when they build and then you build tanks and they spew out, it's that and it does it brilliantly as a board game. You, it's it, you, it's really cheap as well. I've seen it cheap a few times. Track it down if you see it. Um, it's really simple design. Yet you've got the teacher and you're often going. You're building your little meeple empire and you're, it plays quickly and there's troops going out and you fight and you've got all these different things you can chuck down. Um, yeah, it is real time strategy as a board game and it's astounding how well it works as that. If you've ever enjoyed things like Red Alert, um, Command and Conquer, and, and the original Dune, that sort of stuff, and even Starcraft, things like that, any of that sort of stuff on the on the on the old PC, and you've kind of thought, oh, I quite would fancy something on the board game equivalent of that. This is your game, Meeple War. Astounding, actually, surprise to me when I found it. Really good, looks really great. Kind of just fell off the radar. No one really talks about it or, or plays it or, or anything, really. Which is a terrible, terrible shame. Sorted out world. So, well, that brings us to the end of this first part of the Top 50 videos, and, and there we go. Um, th that is that. That was, that was emotional, wasn't it? Um, well, we'll be moving on to the next 10 um, at some point when I get around to editing that video, I imagine. Until then, I've been Mike B. This has been Who Dares Rolls. Um, go and look at other videos we do and stuff. You know, we got Patreon. Just saying. Ta-da!